gentlemen, boys and girls, dying time is here. That's right, we're talking about Graveyard Shift on Animal Tax April's Kill by Kill. Well, greetings and salutations, Internet. It's your old pal, Patrick Hamilton, coming to you once again from the cotton mill hub of Maine. This is the Kill by Kill podcast, where we're dedicated to celebrating the least discussed component of any horror film, the characters. We're going to unpack all the goriest of details of 1990s graveyard shift in the hopes that a uh, person you've hired to clean out the basement of your cotton factory their death is just the beginning of the jokes we might make at their expense and as always there's only one person i trust that if i need a legion of diet pepsi cans to hoard to stop the hordes of rats from coming and eating me alive she'll provide them to me in a brown paper bag the one the only gina radcliffe uh, hi, I just, I'm, you know, if you hold on for a second, I need to turn up the heat in the room I'm recording because oh. I need, I need to get appropriately sweaty and filthy Yeah, you need to, to, be to record this episode. Covered in a sheen of stickiness and re- you need to convey how uncomfortable it is on top of it. Just constantly just wiping at my brow. <laughs> and if you want to tell the audience it's really hot. Put the camera on a thermometer that is so dirty, you can't tell what temperature it is. (laughs) Just filth. Everything is covered in filth. This might be the grossest movie we've ever covered. That's saying something, considering we talked about the unseen. This is a movie in which people work in the basement from the unseen. Yeah, this movie just has an odor. (laughs) I don't want to scare you, Gina. But turns out we are not alone down here. That's right. We have a special guest. Now, you can hear him each and every week on one of our favorite shows anywhere. My neighbors are dead. And, of course, he is a returning champion to this show. The one, the only Adam Peacock. How are you doing today, Adam? I'm good. I'm lifting my arms and no one can see it. I'm I'm celebrating. <laughs> <laughs> Being a, a returning champion. triumphant return to the kill-by-kill kill stage for Adam That's right. Peacock. Give it up. How are you? I'm very, I'm, I'm even better now that you're here. Oh, you're thanks for our, having me back. Yeah, well, <laughs> you're so busy. I always feel <laughs> bad when there's someone that has said yes to this show and then said yes again, like a, like a real idiot. And then I'm going to go like, we got to have him back. But then you're producing a new show every fucking week. Like <laughs> you're doing something. Well, I Nate does a lot more than I do, but yeah. <laughs> That's true. I shouldn't bother Nate. Just what you're doing. No, don't bother. Don't bother him. He's actually busy. <laughs> so Adam, um, uh, we when I put out a couple titles to you, you mm-hmm. jumped at the chance to talk about Graveyard Shift, and my question to you is, why? This is one that I think sits in my horror VHS box Hall of Fame. Mm. You know. Uh, even before I knew what it was, I can remember walking by that VHS and just it really being scary. So I, it always hold it, it'll hold a place in my heart. Yeah, it's weird that that skull, which has one eye, is wearing a mining helmet, but mm-hmm. no one in the movie wears a mining helmet. <laughs> These are they, not miners. No, <laughs> a not. they're not miners. <laughs> B technically, I don't think they're in a mine. And three, <laughs> they're vastly unprepared for what they find down there. Totally. Adam, have you ever read the short story that this is based on? I've never read the short story, no. I'm a uh, bad Gina, fan. how about you? I have, yes. Okay. Have you read it recently? Uh, I went through a rereading Stephen King phase about maybe two or three years ago, and, and I read it then. I read, read the whole uh, collection. So much of the... You know, my idea of what Graveyard Shift was formed more by the movie than by the actual short story that I found it like revelatory that it's just a, you know, heart of darkness like story of people going deeper and deeper and deeper to the bowels of this factory and going crazy as they do it. Whereas this movie is kind of like, it's a work a day life. Here's a here's a drifter straight out of the Incredible Hulk. And he's going to just mosey into town. Yeah. 
and he's going to find work in this factory. He just so happens to know how to work a cotton picker, which is a real fucking thing as, as, as I researched. And then the, there's a, there's a quirky exterminator. He's not, oh, in the, he's not in the story. No, he's not. And talk about a fantastic addition. It's like something I think that King would approve of is the addition of Brad Dorif as this, the exterminator as he is billed as, um, Brad Dorf is amazing in this motion picture. Just dueling accents between <laughs> between him so and, uh, and Stephen Mock, who, who is trying trying to do what he's interpreted as a Stephen King New England accent, and I do not know what this accent is. I don't know either. It's a little. It's a little. It's tight. It's a tat, tat New England. It's a lot just regular England. <laughs> it's <laughs> semi community college our town, but the opera version. Well, it's well, very well, it's just Brad Dorf. Little, little Pepper Schwab <laughs> remembers, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Which is where I got my community college Our Town accent from. But I wasn't in a fucking motion picture. No, nobody else speaks in that accent. He's like the only no. person from this town. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is the weird thing. Is that other people are from Maine here. And um, mm-hmm. the the Wishmaster is in, in an early role here <laughs> with very That poor guy, hair. that's all he's ever going to be known as. <laughs> <laughs> when you own a role like that, Adam, where, I know, I know, you know, it's, he's the wishmaster. It's a, it's a, it's a shame because he's kind of a filthy hunk in this. You know? <laughs> he is a super stud, isn't he? <laughs> he is. <laughs> he's kind of he got like that bad boy thing going on, you know, like yeah, yeah. he ain't bad on the eyes yeah. in this, except he looks unwashed, but so does yeah. everybody else. But everyone's unwashed. It's the the deadwood factor like if everyone's dirty then you're all on the equal playing field like no one's clean we're still gonna have sex (laughs) (laughs) yeah i've never worked in a mine though so that might be what it's like (laughs) i mean it's a lot of guys you know cooped up in a hot dark steamy hole you know (laughs) i mean look you're making good money you might as well have fun while you're at it (laughs) Adam, why didn't we come up with this riff when we were doing my episode on My Bloody Valentine? This I seems don't like a, know. <laughs> are we still doing the episode? Was everything in between a dream and I could just wake up and there hasn't been a pandemic? We're still here, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. You went away for a minute, but you're back now. <laughs> I'm, in a, I'm in a different house, but it, it's fine. Um, <laughs> listen to that episode. I stand by it, Adam. Yeah. You don't have to be kind to me. But for a non-professional improviser, I did okay. Oh, buddy, you were great. You did better than okay. <laughs> You're always very encouraging, and that also means I kind of don't trust you. Anyways, no. so, <laughs> Peacock, <laughs> this is in your, you see this VHS box all the time in the yeah. video store. You're like, one day, one day, one day. So what was mm-hmm. that one day for you? I think it was a creature double feature okay. on channel 20 back when i was a kid growing Mm -hmm. up in detroit we had like you know saturday morning cartoons would eventually bleed into the creature double feature and i feel it was i that's the first time i can remember seeing anything about it on my little you know 13 inch television in my bedroom (laughs) during the the creature double feature i feel like giving you a 13 inch television in your room was a mistake on your parents part i hate to judge them all these years later but look i my mom single mom she did the best she could and a lot of that worked against her you know, uh, it's not her fault. She was kind of figuring out as she went along. And <laughs> so like, how is seeing it now in comparison to did because you could see so little of it, did it's, did your mind fill in the gaps or do you think that was the best way to see it? I think it might've been the best and he, like watching, I was going back and just reading up on it again and just watching things from it before, even this afternoon before we got on. I forget, Gina, you brought him up. I forgot how much Brad Dorf is a part of my life. Oh yeah. Yeah. You, like you, that you, guy you has been around forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You forget how many movies he's in, even if it's just for like a couple minutes. Child's play. Yeah. Uh, this fucking, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the Lord of the Rings? I don't know if I can curse. I'm sorry. I forgot if I can curse. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can add, fuck yes. Okay. Can. Okay. Good. Fuck. Okay, good. Body good. parts, he goes, he does this thing where he's sexy Brad Dorf for yeah. a, a part of it, where he's slick Brad Dorf. And then everything comes, he's pulled apart 
literally. Um, we got to put a pin in body parts, Gina. Yes, we do. After um, my tra- after my transplant. That's right. That's you know what look time. I wish would come back? Like the super hunky late 80s, early 90 guys who wore huge trench coats. I wish that would come back. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would say the the whole sh- school shooting thing kind of put the, the knife in that one. Those of dicks. I for- <laughs> they ruined so many good things. But this is a phenomenon that weirdly enough Gina and I have talked about a lot cuz we after you were on Commando, we covered Cobra and everyone's kind of trying to do this sleazy nine and a half weeks thing where yeah. they wear this gigantic overcoat and you're like, Oh my God, if I unwrapped him from that, he'd be so hot. Mm-hmm. It, but most of the time you're just watching a very skinny person run around in a giant trench coat. That's <laughs> absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can I tell I you something th- real quick before I move on? Sure. I, I send my friends random texts that just say it's the way of the new world pig and only like two or three of them get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I yeah, just think that's such a fun line. You have to take a video of yourself, like, you know, just kind of, you know, putting a real plosive on the piece and just like spittle just flies out of your mouth. <laughs> Smashing two axes above my head. Exactly. Exactly. I'm yeah. telling you right now, I have a brand new, my neighbors are dead pitch just off of this. I'm put a pin Please. in Cobra for me because Done. I think I got something. It's yours. <laughs> it's yours. Um, oh my God. Cobra. Uh, <laughs> I could just start talking about Cobra again. That's the thing. That's what Cobra does. Do you does want to? You. We could. That'd be great. <laughs> I'll just call it Cobra volume three. What <laughs> Peacock, before we yeah. go on, what is your, what is behind the fashion shoot? Why are they robots? Why is she not a robot? <laughs> or is she secretly a robot and uh, Sledgehammer isn't telling her and the rest of the movie is essentially Blade Runner? I think there are some things that we just weren't meant to know. And <laughs> this well, that's might be one because. of those things. I, I need hard answers. Out of this. <laughs> I don't know. We Everybody likes robots. Here. <laughs> okay, let's get back to... <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, Graveyard Shift from yeah, 1990. I'm Stephen sorry. King's crowning triumph. Uh, in an era in which Stephen King was either yeah, pretty good in terms of film output, you know, you have your misery right in this mix here. And then on the other side, you have Graveyard Shift where they're trying to make a whole 90-minute movie out of what is 18 pages? It's, like, I think? it's barely 20 pages. It's it's a real, yeah. it's a real lawnmower man sitch we have here. But, <laughs> right. but, but at least, at least you can kind of see the threads of the original story in this. Sure, they just, yeah. they just added on an extra, you know, you know, half hour of plot having to do with, you know, people having some vested interest in keeping this decaying textile factory open yeah, but and, not enough for the for the the guy who owns the factory to beat a woman in broad daylight. He doesn't think that's going he's, to. I don't think he's even the owner. I think he's like some middle management. Oh god, that makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's not a good manager. Was what it comes down to. I don't think he should be managing people. He doesn't have people skills. Yeah. Well, also his his employees keep dying. Right. And, and, and generally, no and generally this is, you know, this looks bad on a, on yeah. a business owner, but I don't think OSHA is a thing here. <laughs> well, if you, <laughs> if you slip them to hundos, then you get like a full extra two weeks to try to figure out a plan, I guess is what it comes down to. Also, uh, I have to address this, Patrick, you're, you're sure. continuously pronouncing the name of this movie wrong. Oh, graveyard shift. Graveyard shift. Graveyard, graveyard shift. <laughs> I love, just, I love the, 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 the remix, the, the oh, end credits, yes. that's just Genius. bits of dialogue. The end credit song, which just takes <laughs> snippets of the movie and does a Prince, I, I guess there's like, this is, uh, Graveyard Shift has its own bat dance <laughs> when it comes down to it. Someone, just, please, just, my God, my kingdom for this horse, you put print, a picture of Prince. And underneath it, it's the, the sound, the soundtrack to Graveyard Shift. Like that's a fucking t-shirt. Music yeah. from and inspired by Graveyard Shift. <laughs> oh my god, Gina, that's really funny. 
I'm gonna look up this soundtrack right now. While we're talking oh my about god! It's just hey, like I, it, it, it just repeatedly graveyard shift, and every once in a while you've got Brad Dorf go woo. Oh, great, <laughs> hooting and hollering. He is the prince of this song, and weirdly enough, he almost has Prince hair. Um, <laughs> Imagine the video where it's just like six guys dressed like Brad Dorf coming out to do a dance. <laughs> and tonight, the Brad Dorf dancers. <laughs> you kind of said like the man. Brad Dorf, that's Chicago. The Brad Dorf <laughs> dancers. Yeah, he's got kind of like, like, he's not even trying New England at all. He's just trying oh, no. straight like Southern or Texas or something. Yeah, yes. yeah. But with, with Chucky, he's always doing Chicago. There's a yes. lot of Chicago in, in his Charles Lee Ray. A lot of Chicago. The first time I was uh, in Boston and I heard somebody speak with that accent, I was floored. It's like, <laughs> like, I can't believe you people actually talk like that. It's so cool. Wait, you understand one another? All right, come on. Yeah, it's great. It's That's like when you watch uh, it's like when you watch Goodwill Hunting and you hear Ben Affleck and Matt Damon talk in their actual accents. Yes. <laughs> Uh, maybe the reason why it's my favorite performance is for them because they're not lying. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Every other time it feels like they're lying about something and it's the Boston in them. It's not leaping out enough. <laughs> I saw this movie at the Eagle Rock 4. That mall still exists, but where the movie theater is has been taken over by a dozen different businesses. But I saw, like... For whatever reason, the Eagle Rock 4 was where uh, you would see something right before it disappeared. <laughs> so it was like one of those, like, it was like one of those, like, $2 uh, like theaters it, or something like that? It wasn't billed as a bargain theater. I think it just became a bargain theater over time. It's also where mm-hmm. I saw Jason Goes to Hell. And the hallway, which that connected all the theaters, because they were all one after the row, and they were like, you know, railroad apartments for as, <laughs> as movie theaters. But they always had the weirdest collection of movie theater posters that never, and I mean never, changed, mm-hmm. including one that was just called Gas. With I, lots of S's. I remember that title. a comedy about the gas shortage. Timely. <laughs> By the time 1990 rolled around, and it always had the same music. It had, uh, uh, you sexy thing was always a part of it. Dumb and Dumber really brought that back. <laughs> really did. But I was the one person in that theater, like, I'm completely familiar with this. I hear it when I go to the movies once a month at the Eagle Rock <laughs> 4. And I don't, I had read the the book, of course, in a tent in a uh, storm at uh, the Boy Scout Jamboree of 1985. Mm-hmm. because every Boy Scout Jamboree, they always book it immediately when it's going to be a ton of rain showers, and then at least one kid gets struck by lightning. And hey, hey, hey. I, <laughs> I, yeah. At least one kid? At least. When I was there, two kids got struck by lightning. You were part of a bad troop, my friend. Seriously? Well, we were, luckily for us, our campsite was in the woods part, but the open green fields were really exposing a lot of people to lightning strikes. Sure. And of course the most horrifying component of that, the, the, uh, the beach boys played. Oh, good Lord. Twice. You know, struck by, struck by lightning. Okay. But the beach boys, this is a bridge (laughs) too far. The, The first time, you know, you're like, all right, I get it. Like, I don't like Mike Love. The rest of these people are hostages. Fine. (laughs) But then when they couldn't leave town because of the storm, they ended up playing at the closing ceremonies. And so again, you're confronted with the Mike Love monster, which is way grosser than this albino bat that's in this movie. Yeah, that's what this movie doesn't understand. There's see rats and bats. <laughs> How? I guess it, this is a study of management styles. On mm-hmm. one hand, you have Stephen Mock's character, who is very poor at managing people, motivating them, without using fear or sexual politics. Whereas our giant albino bat seems to really enjoy the company of these rats and lead them with a plum. And they do exactly what he quote unquote tells them to do. Does he speak the same language as the rats? 
Well, it's just all kind of a general high pitch squeaking, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like the difference between Peacock's Detroit, Michiganer accent and a Boston accent, but they're both speaking the same language. Yes, basically. Okay. <laughs> See, we brought it back around. Got to. And we are introduced to this motion picture with a guy working in the bowels of this hot, dirty. He's so uh, filthy. Everybody in this movie is just so filthy. There's stink lines coming off of them. Because they they all work in dirty peanut central. Like <laughs> nothing about this is clean. Yeah. It is gross as fuck. And this guy's left to his own devices. He gets a desk, by the way. What does he need a desk for? And he hauls over bags of cotton, piles it into this picking machine, which just picks, picks, picks at it. And then and then every 10 minutes he goes over and hits a button. I don't I don't understand how it works, but he for, does. Good for apparently, him. apparently, even though you know this is a mill, like mm-hmm. nobody knows nobody knows how to work this thing, and it's considered <laughs> you know a very highly skilled job. I, it's highly skilled. You have your own desk, but you're also in the hottest place in the entire, you know, facility. And he spies a rat on a chair and he's like, hey, how are you doing? And then the rat pees the the amount of it, the size of a rat. Like how much pee is in one rat? <laughs> I can't yeah, that, be much, that, right? That that rat that <laughs> rat's definitely that rat's definitely hit the Gatorade before uh, <laughs> before he bothered him. Oh my god! Um, and the opening credits of this, which I've always enjoyed, give the implication that the, maybe the rats haven't always lived in this factory, but have been pushed into the bowels of the factory by the river flooding which has overcome the graveyard. And that's when my little brain started going, is the main bat actually kind of like a a vampire who's frozen in one state? (laughs) I think that would make this movie a little too interesting. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, man, Stephen King does like himself some weird looking vampires, but in the, in the book, is it really, is it, also a bat no it it's just, just it's a it's a giant rat right it and like like the, like the like the mats the, the, the rats are all like mutated and yeah. and i don't know if it's because they've been all just living underground this whole time or or you just get the impression there's some sort of like the, the, the ground or the water is toxic or something but they're all yeah. like they're all like far bigger than normal and they're they're blind and and they, they they're you know, you know kind of just you know, driven by smell and and so and they're yeah used to dead bodies they've been feeding on human flesh for so long that they're into it right mm-hmm. exactly well yeah that's the thing in the, in the opening like he he cuts his hand and you know, you know, throws the blood soaked bandages on the floor which is yeah. disgusting like what the fuck no that's wonder so this gross. place is so gross yeah. and then the, and then and then and then the rats like mm, have a little nibble a little nosh ooh <laughs> And he throws that rat into the cotton picker, which doesn't that ruin what you've been working on? Yeah, what? That's what I thought, Patrick. Like you're already is, working, like everything. You're already fighting an uphill battle. Now you're gonna do this? <laughs> no, like you're the guy up, like Stephen mocked is and go, "Hey, yeah, uh, you've got a cotton picker full of rat blood. You got to hose that off." I can't do. Uh, I'm taking that out of your. That was I'm good. Taking that man. out of your paycheck. <laughs> That's like Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Goodbye, Eleanor. <laughs> fear not the rat you put in the cotton picker now. Fit, fear its albino giant boss that lives in the basement. Uh, what were we talking about? Anyways, he gets scared into the cotton picker. He doesn't even he doesn't even get bit by the giant rat, which we can't see and won't see for another. He just falls. Minutes. He just like blap, just falls right in. He's like oopsie doodle and falls into the cotton picker, which he again, does act like he's scared though, right? Oh, he's seen the giant albino rat. I mean, you see that up close. You're you you would back up, Peacock. right? Right, of course. Yeah, I yeah, <laughs> I don't, would. Don't front like you're some big man I'm not. who can just <laughs> defeat a, an albino rat bat. I gotta stop. I'm sorry. I was feeling myself. You did this last time. We were, you did this last time when we went out drinking. 
You're like, I know. you know, I can beat up Mike Tyson. I can take <laughs> out a giant albino rat. And I'm like, okay. Like, but you yeah. say this every time you're drunk and you're like, I, I do. Know. And then we hugged. I was, I, I don't really believe it, but it is fun <laughs> to say that I could do those things. <laughs> <laughs> you got several of the people bar believing you and then the other half is like i don't know and yeah, then yeah. i'm just with my hand on, with my hand on my chin going Pecan. yeah <laughs> i like to lie to people when i go out to the bar <laughs> <laughs> you're never gonna see those fucking people again why no. not yeah they don't know i'm not a plastic surgeon <laughs> And little do they know, it's because you take old uh, Tupperware containers. You make mm -hmm. sure that the other kinds of uh, lids fit on top of them. That's what you that call is plastic correct. surgery. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, look, none more righteous than the next. Am I right? <laughs> That's right. You're both dealing with plastic and reforming things. Uh, it's We're both changing death. lives. We're both changing lives. <laughs> Into town wanders college boy. Uh, what like by, college man he's oh 35 God, man, <laughs> i mean holy shit i i click on this guy's wikipedia and it could not be shorter he might as well have appeared <laughs> in the background of a motion picture but um, he really sells that college boy line, though. <laughs> it really really does he wanders into town he's just looking for work he's straight out of the fugitive by the looks of him and he wanders into a restaurant, which is nearly as dirty as the, the cotton this mill that fills. everyone works I can't in. get over it. It's gross. This entire, it's just gross. You know, you know, they keep trying to shut down this factory. It should shut down the whole town. There's something wrong. Uh, <laughs> they, don't have, they, don't, yes. they don't have running water or something. Or the only running water they have has gone through the graveyard. Yeah. It, they had a hard rain and the cemetery collapsed. Let's just, <laughs> let's light the whole place on fire and just forget that it ever existed. You know, we complain about a lot of things that might be considered first world problems, but I think yeah. it rained too hard for the graveyard to handle is, <laughs> is not amongst them. That is a serious no. problem. This restaurant at one point later, because why cut talk about the plot? The plot is they all go in the basement and they find a giant rat bat. Up until that point, everything else is in flux. College man and the and one woman <laughs> happen to be in there. And then the wishmaster and his toady bring over to college man a hamburger bun with a dead rat on it. Yeah, they just they just decide like as soon as this guy shows up, they're like, well, we hate him. Yeah. He is hateable. Let's put it this way. Well, that, if that's he fair. Shows up, that's you, fair. He doesn't, he has a very punchable face. That being said, this restaurant is willing to risk it all for this hilarious joke that they have provided them with a hot, with a hamburger bun. Not to mention lettuce, tomato, and onion on the side. Well, you got to have your well, fixings. I mean, uh, Patrick, let's, in for a dead rat. Let's be fair, though, buddy. If if any place is going to let you do that, it's this place. Like they don't have to <laughs> yeah. worry about the Better Business Bureau coming in, or <laughs> no, you know, you just slip that guy a hundo and yeah. you're good to go. It's a lawless town we are in, my friend. Anything goes. <laughs> yeah. The the one girl in town, played by Kelly Wolf. Yeah, that's um, a, this is a weird casting because she's kind of like this, like. You know, tough girl who, you know, won't take any shit and can, you know, do the same kind of work as the boys. She's got these tiny little pipe stem arms. <laughs> like she lifts a box in one scene. It looks like the first time she's ever lifted a box. Yeah, that's <laughs> very, very <laughs> true. She looks like low res um, Marissa Tomei. Aww. Can I tell can I tell you what it says when I look her up on Wikipedia because you sure. can't click on her name so I clicked on the grave graveyard shift site. Sure. Kelly Wolf. Kelly J Wolf is an American politician from the state of Alaska. He what? served in the Alaska House of Representatives from 2003 to 2005. It's not even the same person. <laughs> Just like a Kelly Wolf. Sure. That'll oh. work. Then Brad Dorf shows up and you're like, "Thank God. I'm in good hands." And Brad Dorf does a couple things. He flushes out rats with a fire hose. Love to see it. Mm -hmm. Industry at work. Then college man is in the basement 
And he just decides today's the day for a monologue. A monologue <laughs> about his time in Nam. <laughs> And don't get him wrong. He's not one of those Vietnam vets who just went crazy with the flamethrower in his hands. No, no, no. He's different, everyone. And so I, he, I, I, I miss back in Nam monologues. We don't get them anymore because, <laughs> because a lot, you know, you know, it's at this point, you know, a lot of people who are in Vietnam are, are you know, getting on if not passing away sure. entirely. So you, you don't mm-hmm. have these like rough and tough 45 year old dudes, you know, you know, <laughs> giving that stare off into the middle distance or, you know, like the stern Martin Sheen talk. We don't, we don't get that anymore. No, we really <laughs> don't. We, and we deserve more of it. The only one I can really think of is that SNL sketch in, in, in which uh, they were making puppets. And oh, one yeah. of them was a, uh, was a, not a Vietnam veteran, but a veteran of Grenada. <laughs> oh, good times. Anyways, his story, which you love to hear is why he knows rats are bad. And that's because back in Vietnam, according to him, uh, the opposing force would capture American soldiers, stake them to the ground, uh, cut them just above the stomach area, and then put a rat there. And then a burning bowl on top of the, the, the body. So the rat is forced to flee from the heat inside of the human body of course mm-hmm. that's a really that's a really elaborate torture plan it is it's a lot to do first off i, I think it's well within their the realm of possibility that they've got four stakes and some rope because who doesn't <laughs> but then you gotta you gotta capture a rat then you got to make sure it's a rat that doesn't love heat so maybe there's some testing going on there <laughs> then you got to find a soldier whom you can overwhelm and tie to the ground. Then you got to get that bowl nice and hot. And that's a whole fucking afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so, what yeah. do you get out of it? Like a guy going, get this rat out of my body. <laughs> do you think at any time the person preparing this has the thought to themselves, this isn't worth it. I need to, <laughs> I need to do something else with my day. This is way too much this? work. Yeah, this is too much. <laughs> Listen, I, I could be doing so many other things with totally. my time. Like, the Americans aren't going to last here. The French didn't. I'm no. just biding my time until they go. Why am I wasting an entire afternoon and evening putting right. rats inside guys? And they're clearly a creative because look what they're doing. <laughs> they could be focusing this energy towards art or music or yeah. anything. Unless he considers that art. And then which case... Well, you know, yeah, yeah, that's true. Then we're all screwed. <laughs> Coming soon to the modern art museum near you. <laughs> and so that's how he knows rats are bad. Not that they're just gross, filthy creatures who, in this case, are constantly eating the rotting corpses of dead bodies. I mean, that's really the least of their problems, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> they're also trapped in this factory and they're not getting paid. Yeah, that's that's the real tragedy here. What do you pay rats in? I don't even know how you convert that into what, what are they, I don't know. What cheese. are their needs? Cheese. A little place to live. Yeah. Well, they, def, they definitely have the place to live, although they've recently had to relocate. Yeah. Uh, but they, they, um, here's a tricky question. The way rats are handled in this motion picture, do you feel like, it wasn't good. You mean the the treatment of the animals? Because I got a feeling rats were injured in the making. You mean of like the you mean like was the was the, the the rat wrangler approved by uh, the Humane Society or the yeah. ASPCA? I'm gonna mm. guess no. No, <laughs> I really don't think so. This movie came There's out in 1990. A, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of shots of of rats being flung and then being hit with fire hoses. Yeah, and you're like. Yeah, you can do that with a doll. And I would per- I, I would rather that be the case. But sometimes there's just like rats on pieces of wood floating down a makeshift river. And you're like, <laughs> that's not good. That's not good at all. Yeah. Well, well that the scene we were talking about where he, he gets scared into the into the cotton uh, machine, he mm-hmm. picks the rat up by the tail. And I the what I was watching, I was like, leave it alone. It didn't do anything <laughs> to you. Yeah, don't you fucking don't touch to them. Rat. Yeah. Don't yeah. touch them. <laughs> yeah, what? Uh, yeah, you know they're gross. Like you're just inviting to get sick. 
I mean, yeah. I live, I live, I live in the city, and I, I encounter you know, not in my home, thank God, because I'll burn the place down. But, but sure. yeah, I do tend to account, encounter a rat every now and then. And mm-hmm. you know, my first thought is like, well, let me like you know, pick it up and fling it. No, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, usually, usually I make a, a comically high pitched eh! sound, and uh-huh. then like yeah. you know, run in the other direction. Throw your pizza on the ground. Go. You earned this. And exactly. Run the other direction. Exactly. You know, wait yeah. for them to take over a subway train. <laughs> you know, and then you know, you pray the Lord that it, it is quick for me. Two hundred rats in a man suit driving a train. <laughs> <laughs> was the, do you think that's what the Vietnamese were trying to do? Was create a man rat hybrid, like a could, like a super rat? Yeah. Well, well, they could like the Terminator. It would be rats in a skin suit that they would then send into the enemies to gather intelligence. Jeez, I think the war would horrifying. have been very. Di- that is horrifying. The, I think the war would have been very different if they had rat <laughs> super soldiers. I don't know. No, could have changed everything. I mean, you know they, they, they they couldn't train them properly because you know when when they they couldn't completely blend in because whenever they would you know have their uh, their rations, they'd be like. Just like you know, putting their hands up, putting their hands up to their mouths, and everybody's like, "Whoa, that's weird." <laughs> well, we can take solace in the fact that there's some company in the middle America right now who's probably trying to develop that very same technology. Because you know they leave the bones alone, so well, yeah. they act as the muscles. Mm-hmm. You, you put enough rats in the head where they can act as the eyes and so forth. <laughs> I don't know. This is a good plan. Okay, now we're trying to now we're getting a little bit of a ratatouille thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> now, Peacock, have you watched the movie Deadly Eyes? Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, Deadly Eyes is also a killer rat movie, but it's a killer rat movie that's in Montreal, if I or Toronto. No, I, I thought it was. Which. I thought it was New York. Or is, is it, it New York? It, or it's supposed to be New York? I think. Yeah, it, it could be a one. You know, trying to be the because other. yeah, because the big you know showpiece at the end of the movie is where they take over a subway the subway train. Right. And and you know what? I can't watch that because that movie is fucking horrifying. <laughs> they eat a baby. They eat a baby. What? That just <laughs> sounds cool as hell. <laughs> they eat a baby peacock. I'm telling you, <laughs> right now there are a few movies that have it like in their arsenal. Like one of the bullets that's in the chamber is like, you know what? I think these these killer rats got to eat a baby at some point in this movie. And everyone yeah. behind the camera is like, you're right. Get us a baby. Well, because like, there's always that there's always here? that urban legend about like you know you know someone in New York waking up in the middle of the night and like a rat just sitting on their baby's chest. Right. So right. like let's take let's take this one step further. Let's have it eat the fucking baby. Yeah. Just you know keel him over in his seat and uh, eat him whole. Yeah, I guess it's irradiated corn is what sets them off, <laughs> and then they grow large. And because they can't obviously use real rats, they put. Uh, Dauschen dogs in rat costumes and they run around and it goes from like, oh, that's gross to adorable. Wow. Because the <laughs> rats are not moving like rats. They're moving like tiny dogs. And then they attack an entire subway train. Because <laughs> oh I, re- I very much remember the ending because it's like the train pulls into the station and like, <laughs> and like there's like nobody on it. And it also like blood so rat like, ah! Like, like, <laughs> Clings to the window and then roll credits. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god! The Blu-ray of this is one hundred and eighty-four dollars and ninety-nine I'll, cents. I'll let you borrow mine. <laughs> Do you, you have one? It? Oh, yeah. I want to watch it. Oh, of course I have one. Peacock, I have a problem. <laughs> I have a serious problem. Yeah, I need to borrow this, Patrick. <laughs> I, I, if you can come down. I'll project it on the big screen. That you know would be that awesome. Would be? The second time I projected Deadly Eyes on a big screen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, uh, what were we talking about again? Oh, graveyard right. shift. Graveyard. Yeah. graveyard. Shift. As great as that monologue is, perhaps my favorite part uh, that that Bido, as as Gina and I have started to coin him in the in our chats, is the moment where he's talking to Steve Mock, and at the first part of the scene, he puts his feet up on the desk, and he's just wearing socks. Mm-hmm. And towards the end of the meeting, he puts his feet back up and he's got boots on. <laughs> and I believed it. I just think he's got the kind of feet that can snake in and out of a boot. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Those boots are. He's like a firefighter. His boots are just underneath his desk, ready to go at a moment's right. notice. <laughs> exactly. He just slips them in, and yeah. it doesn't matter if they're tied or not. Now the the gal in this, um, who's I guess the are they? Are they genuinely having sex? Is that what it comes down to? College man and one woman. I, I think it's implied that they immediately become a couple. That's cute though. Yeah, sure. I love. I love. I, I feel like this is kind of a little gag because he like asks her if, if, uh, if she's from that town. She's like, "Oh no, I'm from Castle Rock," <laughs> which, is like, which is like, "Yeah, I mean, Castle Rock's a shithole." <laughs> That's yeah. the whole point of it. You know, it's like saying, like, "Oh no, I'm from Derry." <laughs> Listen, twenty six years, twenty six years out of every three decades, great. Sure. Then you get a bit of a rough patch where children start to die. Sometimes their arms ripped off and you just have to look the other way because it's so great the other 26 years. It seems like a lot of people in Derry were having a good time. I don't know what these seven <laughs> kids were bitching about, but <laughs> that town oh, square these... looks nice where the Paul Bunyan comes to life. That was fun. That oh, looks yeah. like a nice place. It's a wonderful green space. Yeah. It's lined with trees. They've got a nice movie theater. It's it's got some killer video games. They play yeah. Dream Master. Uh, the pharmacy and the Tim Curry one looked very nice. Nice place <laughs> you'd like to shop. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, she she's coming from Castle Rock to here. Move it on up to the east side. <laughs> <laughs> she does have a nice car, though, so she's got that going for her. She probably lives her. in it. Yeah. <laughs> no, she's in an apartment. Are, is the apartment where he makes coffee and makes food, is that his apartment or her apartment? Oh, I don't even know. Gina, uh, I enjoyed the way you said that so much. <laughs> <laughs> she probably fucking lives it. <laughs> I mean, it's cleaner than any other place in that godforsaken I town. Guess. There's nowhere bad to live in this town. <laughs> If you're not living below the cotton, you right. know, factory. Yeah. It's, it is all the wrong side of the tracks. Totally. <laughs> it's it's surrounded by bad tracks. Yeah. Like the train just goes in a circle around this one <laughs> fucking town. It's a Christmas tree train. <laughs> <laughs> around deadly rat Schittsburg. <laughs> Uh, who, you know, uh, everyone there is descended from the Mayflower, the shittiest rat fuck part of the Mayflower. Jesus. Yeah. Well, <laughs> had to go somewhere. And eventually all of, all of this rigmarole about whether or not, <laughs> whether or not this cotton mill is going to continue on comes down to, <laughs> they've got to clean up this basement. Mm -hmm. I don't know why no part of the factory is in the basement, but it, I don't know why they just don't fill it with fucking cement. Why don't you fill it with cement? Yeah, I don't. I don't know. You're asking a lot I, of I, weird I, questions. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Like, I don't know what like the the goal, the ultimate goal is. I don't know how this this the, this mill affords to stay open, matches to stay open because they 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 are constantly cleaning it. They're never actually producing anything. Yeah. No. No. Patrick, the way you asked that, it was as if Gene and I worked there and we both answered you like, what do you want us to do, man? Like, exactly. Come on, I man. need answers. Yeah. We don't want to work here either. Uh, are you Are you OSHA? I, I'm sorry. I don't have to answer your questions, sir. Because if you are OSHA, you should have shut this shit down years ago. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm glad 200 is all it took for you to, you know, send us back yeah. into this garbage. <laughs> 200 listen, bucks. Listen, my rat babies need shoes, too. <laughs> OSHA doesn't pay me that well. And if someone's about to slip them to me, I'm going to take those two hundos and the hundo from the restaurant. My friend Gina has six fingers and she started the day with five. <laughs> <laughs> you get the hell out of here, OSHA. <laughs> a lady who has been, uh, who, who has a case for sexual harassment. She, it, this is terrible what has happened to her. But in the middle of the night, she decides to, quote unquote, sneak in with a flashlight, make a whole bunch of fucking noise, break into a desk, find this one file that says, this place is a shithole and they're not doing anything about it. And she's like, gotcha, suckers. Yeah. And then she tries to leave and she's like, oh, there's a line of rats. Can't go that way. And falls down the stairs backwards. That's brutal. Butter tea kettle. <laughs> <laughs> just falls down 
breaks at least three things. And then the movies, the movie implies that the rats just eat her slowly over time. Yeah. But apparently like, like they just ate her entirely because she's not mentioned again. Or you can't tell the blood from anything else in this gross fucking location. Well, she breaks her neck, right? Isn't that, isn't that why she's, she breaks her neck? Yeah. She, yes. I mean, she definitely is look her head is in a weird position and we see yeah. that her arm and wrist are also broken. So she has p- lots of problems. <laughs> she's she's had she, better days. Sure. <laughs> the day she put that ax through that it's through Stephen Mock's windshield was way better than how it ended. We end up with all of our quote unquote main characters forced into this basement where the goal is to clean it out. And like half of the people are like, like going through boxes of bills and paperwork. It's like, who fucking cares? Take it upstairs, (laughs) figure it out up there. Yeah. She's like, Oh, they'll, he has to take, he wants us to take an inventory of everything. It's like what? Every individual (laughs) sheet of paper. Yeah. Like every busted fucking chair, busted chair. Number 46. (laughs) I guess. (laughs) It's weird. I think, Jaina, it's a new record. This may be the only basement we've covered that does not have chairs on the ceiling. No, but it does have a lot of chairs. It does have... It, it, what it lacks in specificity, it more than makes up for in volume of loose chairs. <laughs> I would not trust to sit on. Like, everything should be burned. Why aren't they just burning it? Yeah, my grandparents have a bunch of loose chairs in their basement, so I I get it. <laughs> now, do any of them have them nailed to ceiling rafters? <laughs> no, I haven't been over there for a minute, but they might. <laughs> uh, no, not right now. Most a lot of them are up in the garage in those rafters, okay. and some of them are down okay. in the basement against in like the storage room. Okay. I, I the phenomenon of nailing a chair to a rafter is very new to me, but of course I grew up in California. We just don't have basements. So at one point college man discovers that there's a trap door you even say it was to stain in your voice like everybody says. i just i don't think there's nothing about him that reeks of college other than the fact that apparently this guy has a file on him and then it lists college as a previous experience yeah i, I think it's because you know. he's i think it's because he looks like he's bathed recently right so everybody's yeah, yeah. like oh <laughs> check out mr hoity toity here oh you're too good for grime on your body 24 7 he knows what irish spring is <laughs> oh you don't smell like cotton rats and dirt Ooh, your 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 shirt isn't stuck to your body well check out mr <laughs> fancy pants that is here such a midwest thing guys of like somebody who's just trying to do a little better and you're like look at you, you piece of shit you think you're better than me? <laughs> Fuck you. Well, I mean, this movie has so many things that are just baked in the cake of Stephen King. And one of them is that idea that I went to college and I studied to do something. And then I ended up being the janitor in a high school. And everyone looked at it me like, fucking loser. Fucking, you're the worst. <laughs> the worst person that's ever existed. I don't like your glasses and your teeth are weird. Oh. And... And then on top of it, you have machines that eat people. That's another big Stephen King. Yeah. Bullies. Mm-hmm. Of course, we get the Wishmaster bully. Yeah, but the sad part person. is these dudes are like 30. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little more relatable when you have someone you pick it on you and you're like 12. Right. But these are like grown adult men. <laughs> Who have nothing else to, they have nothing else in their lives but to eat at the shitty restaurant and shit talk anyone who walks in who appears to have bathed recently. And you know, constantly just hanging out with each other. Not, nowhere else. Nobody goes anywhere. Can right. I ask a question? And sure. I, what do you think is sadder? A kid who is a bully when they're a kid or an adult who never left his hometown and is still that bully? <laughs> It has to be two because you can outgrow being a shithead. But if you stay being a shithead, that's you've 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 hit the ditch of life. Yeah, I think I think it's sad. Like the not neither one. I think it's sad the the young kid being a bully because it's probably something bad happening at home. Absolutely. Well, it's an I unmet that, need. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to go off the rails. I just. I- <laughs> 
this is going off the rails, but Gina and I trading barbs about college man showering, that wasn't out of bounds. No, I, I was trying to sound like I was smart. Like, what do you think's worse for bullies? <laughs> Peacock, you know you're smart. Come on. Man. I did go to college. Yes, you absolutely <laughs> did. And you probably no, bathed recently. I, within the last week, Gina, I have. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think you've one-upped on everyone working in this cotton dungeon. I promise you they all have more money than I do. <laughs> well, their rent is like a shiny nickel, and you live in Los Angeles. <laughs> That's true. I hate to blow up your spot. Yeah. You live in Los Angeles. <laughs> when I go home, I act like I'm a millionaire because a, a, a can of pop doesn't cost 50 bucks. <laughs> And so they find this trap door and then, and for whatever reason, the college man is like, this is where your rat problem is stemming from. We just need to go down there and dot, dot, dot. He doesn't even have to finish that ludicrous fucking thought because already Stephen Mock is like, yeah, we need to go down there. We, uh, I need to go crazy. I need to put dirt on my face. I need to go bug nuts and it's going to all going to happen now. Everyone come with me. Mm -hmm. And then the one girl's like, I'm definitely going down there. Why? With my, with with my, with my tiny pipe cleaner arms. (laughs) I need to get in there Mm -hmm. and immediately get separated from the group. And so you have two groups who are just really in a bad situation. We got college man and one girl, and they're going through flooded tunnels using a coffin as a guide, everyone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I'm like, I don't know. Is this movie ludicrous enough? Like, there's plenty of fun things about it. and It's not particularly well made, you know, but it's <laughs> almost competent. And then, for reasons, the coffin that they're using splits open. And the skeleton screams. And I'm like, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Back in. Yeah. You won me over. Yeah. If you make a skeleton scream, that's scary. It's okay. Great. It's perfect. No notes. The other thing that the movie does randomly when things get scary is that there's a Casio trumpet that plays. <laughs> and there's nothing more mournful than a Casio trumpet. Just all of a sudden, in this bombastic horror, you know, score, there's a... (laughs) What the fuck is happening here? Did a jazz trio land in the middle of the recording session? Why is there a fucking trumpet? I know every generation says this, but our childhoods were the best. (laughs) They really were. They They were just the greatest. Yes. I Well, I think there was an abundance of shit. That yeah. is is part of it, and it, there was so much time. <laughs> Your day wasn't filled with so much. Again, this comes with being a child. Like <laughs> my kid <laughs> uh, does not have a ton on his schedule, and uh, it's a good thing to have breath because every once in a while you're going to find skeleton screaming or Casio trumpets and go, yeah, this is great, this yeah. is perfect. Yeah, not only do we have, like, Casio trumpets, we also have looped-in screams. Like, yeah. one person gets killed, and they put in a fucking Howie Long scream. <laughs> the, yeah! the, the, the one that they would use to indicate when they were in hell in South Park. Yes, <laughs> exactly. That That's one. Howie Long? Yeah, well, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's actually him screaming, but it's mostly, it's most people know it from the movie Broken Arrow. Uh, but obviously, this was before Broken Arrow, so they've been using this. Um, it's basically a, a, like a, it's basically a B level Wilhelm scream. That's yeah, funny. it's Wilhelm scream, but more obvious. Yeah, it's just like it's a very masculine yeah, scream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Broken Arrow, great movie. Yeah, Broken. yeah. So many terrible haircuts in that. So um, good. Uh, it's just gr- wonderful crap. That's the thing. Like, I just, we don't appreciate crap as much. No, it's, 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 I blame the discourse because you, you can't, you can't simply say this not very good movie was still entertaining. Yeah. Like, like it has it's, to be either the best movie ever or the worst movie ever. 
Yeah. And then you it's have the to take th- culture. Yeah, you have to threaten to kill the people who made it if you don't like it. <laughs> it's only rational, Peacock. Yeah. I, I came here to enjoy myself. <laughs> and if you don't entertain me, I have to threaten you with bodily harm. That's what it comes down to. That's the bargain we all made. Remember how Broken Arrow, like, it had that weird kind of dreamy score that didn't go with, like, dun, the, the dun, rest dun, of the dun, accent? Dun, dun, dun. I, I, I loved it. I just like, this is so fucking weird. This is great. Dun, dun, dun. My buddy had the soundtrack, and we it's, would play it, pool at his house on Thursday nights, and I would listen <laughs> to it over and over. It's like the it's like the music you play like when you like you met the love of your life for the first time. Yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's like this guy's just launching missiles at people. It's it's semi Twin Peaks, and it's also a little Dewey's theme. Yes, from Scream too. Yes, yes, yeah, Dewey's theme. Yeah, yeah, they're all in the. Are they all the same guy? Or are they all Bala? Oh, I don't know. I, I, listen, people don't come here for information. Fuck this noise. Let's talk about some rat deaths. Everyone gets chewed on. Whether or not it's their arm getting pulled through a hole that they put their arm oh, into. Oh, yeah. Everybody, is real, everybody is real comfortable just sticking their hands and things. Like, you've got oh, the... Yeah. The guy who finds that that old roll top desk, he's like, "Well, let me dig around here." Oh no, rats! <laughs> don't don't fucking dig into the rolling desk when you know there's a massive rat problem. What is that guy going to do when he sticks his arm into the hole in the wall and he's like, "I'm just gonna reach my way to freedom"? No, you're gonna get your arm bit off by a giant albino bat. And I love it. He's like, "Ah, something's got my arm." It's like, why do you sound so surprised? <laughs> I'm surprised it took this long for something to get your arm. I love when he pulls his arm out too and he's acting hurt and he's throwing chunks of his arm all over the place. <laughs> it's so great. <clears throat> and you know what? It, it they it looks like the kind of place that needs arm chunks. That's the thing. Yeah. Like it's the one part that was missing from that locale. <laughs> Why is it so bright in that fucking tunnel? Is the other part. Is is there a train on the other end waiting to come through when they're done? There's always one giant fucking light, no matter where they are, that's beaming from the other direction. That's, a, that's an OSHA regulation. That's the only thing yeah. the OSHA guy did, got right. Could be a guy True. we never see who's been holding the light this whole time. At least when they make it to the bone pit. And yes, everybody, there's a giant fucking bone pit in this that is a matte painting. And you're like, bravo. It's see? Fucking awesome. It's fake as fuck. There's no, there's no way you can believe that's real. And I don't want to. This is a giant bat movie. And the bad foreman has fallen into a bone pit. And then one girl and college man arrive there. And they're crawling over. With, they don't know that he's at the bottom of the bone pit. And he grunts. And they're immediately like, well, we got to get him out of here. No, you don't. You no. do not. He's tried to kill everyone at this point. He's just gone fucking nuts. And they're like, well, I can't leave him in this pile of bones. Yes, you can. The police can get him out of the pile of bones. You know what makes this movie, hearing you talk about that, Patrick, what makes this movie great is that it taps into the thing that we were talking about as as children. It Mm -hmm. makes you believe, you know? Right. Like telling, yeah, there is, I want there to be a huge bat in my town that eats people. (laughs) I want there to be a bone pit in my in my hometown. Just just under the fa- just under the big factory that nobody knows yes. what exactly it does. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> now you are you're from Detroit though. Like, do we know for sure there isn't there are giant factories that aren't doing anything? Do we know there aren't bone well, pits and a giant albino bat also there? So just so I, I'm not I'm not spreading falsehoods. I grew up. I'm from just outside of Detroit, and okay. we did have a backyard like a like a a field back where I grew up and we called it, or the kids called it the humps because there was a hill in there and there was Mm -hmm. like a carpet and like, you know, some seating areas. And that's where we were told the devil worshipers went. Uh, Uh, I had devil worshipers in my town too. Did you really Gina? I did. Was it, was it like my hometown where it was just teenagers who wanted a place to drink and smoke and do like hand stuff? It it was exactly that. It was exactly (laughs) that. Yeah. You know, sometimes they draw a pentagram, like just to make yes. it a little extra scary. Sure. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Because they listen to whatever, they listen to a Slayer record. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. See, the closest this came, I came to was that there was a, a big house at the end of my street that was literally like perched on a hilltop that was of the style of a castle. And it was used in a couple movies. Uh, most of them. I'm sorry, check that. All of them were porn. And mm-hmm. 
it was like a castle. And that's where people said the devil worshipers were. But in reality, it was just, it was just people making porn. Man, devil worshipers get a bad name. They get a bad rap because really? they're not doing bad stuff. Like the, all the no, stuff. They're that certainly they're, not taking yeah. over the humps. No. As they're, <laughs> they're not making pornos in a weird, well, they might be making pornos in a weird case, yeah, but they they're, might, you know, yeah. that's not a bad thing. If it's all consensual. Now, Gina, isn't there the, that one place where uh, the son of Sam apparently went to that's like an old house that people use the, the basement as like... Are you, talking about, the, are you talking about that Netflix thing that said... Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I don't believe that, but the, the, <laughs> they're, they're, they're uh, I mean, supposedly, yeah. Sure. I, I have feeling. Oh, yeah. I have a feeling in New York City, though. Like your 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 double worshippers are like more of an upper class kind of, you know, True, like yeah. the cast of that. You know, I mean, right. they're they're living in those high end co ops. <laughs> Did I tell you guys about that Dahmer bar in Chicago that I lived by? Well, um, no, uh, all ears. So in my the neighborhood I lived in Chicago was uh, uh, like Lakeview, and Lakeview in is by Wrigleyville, which is by Boys Town. And I guess Dahmer would drive down from Milwaukee. And again, this is all, you know, <laughs> allegedly he would come mm-hmm. down from Milwaukee and like that area of town was his hunting ground for lack of a better term. Mm-hmm. And he would hang out at this bar called the L and L tavern from what I've been told. So the first time we were in Chicago for whatever reason we were there, we went to that bar my buddy Mike went up to the bartender and this was long after Jeffrey Dahmer had died. And he goes, is it true that Dahmer used to drink here? And the bartender goes, yeah, and he still does. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> to this day. Yeah. And then you look over. Dahmer and gets you, that you, question you, all the time. You look over and there's like a large Marge painting, but it's Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> it was a night just like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> now, did he take the, uh, the, the, the Italian sausage out of his mouth when he said this, or did he just move it to the side? Like a cigar, you know he's just talking around it. Patrick, he kept it right where it was, and he spoke perfectly clear. He enunciated every syllable, every, na- it was amazing. This is the thing, like, it, just because he didn't advance educationally the way some people did, it doesn't say that he doesn't have marketable skills. Bartender. Keeps a sausage in his mouth, but yeah. talks perfectly. Knows things about Jeffrey Dahmer in that he drank there, probably still does. Yeah. He's a wealth of information, this one. I mean, Chicago's as close to a second home as I have, and they're good people for that. Yes, very much so. So basically <laughs> at the end of this movie, what are we talking about again? Graveyard shift. <laughs> at the end of this movie, they pull mocked out of the bone hole he's in. And he's like, great, thank you. Let me get the sharpest bone I can have and start fighting you. <laughs> mm-hmm. They are not, no, they're not paid in kind. He immediately not it kills the one girl and <laughs> then eventually slips and falls. I think he gets stabbed a little bit. He at least gets hit in the head. And then lo and behold, boss bat rat shows up. He's like, and, he's like, let's do some hand-to-hand combat. And the rat just like, bap, just like stabs him. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to do hand-to-hand combat with the giant winged rat. Hey, this is second fucking fight with it. The first time he's like, let me stab you in the wing. You're going to have to do a lot more than that shit. You're going to have to really stab its body. Don't go for the wings. Why don't we stop trying to stab it? How come nobody came back with a gun or a blowtorch or, you know, this okay. is really yeah, I mean, A flamethrower yeah. would have done you know, would have done wonders for this situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. So much good can be done with a flamethrower. Yeah. Don't listen to the Vietnam veteran. It would have done wonders to clean up this factory. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Gina, this town. The whole, the whole town. Uh, no, I think Gina's got a plan, and that's a flamethrower for this country. And exactly. I'm on board, buddy. Take it all down, start over again. Gina, I will vote for you for president. Let's get this done. <laughs> Salty earth shit. in a couple places. Yeah. Yeah. Start fresh. Yeah. Move an ice. Now, just. Feel the tickling heat of my flame. <laughs> Put it on a bumper sticker. Uh, Radcliffe for president. Uh, and so, and then college man just kind of like beats feet. How does, does he defeat the bat? He like, bops him, doesn't he bop him in the head? Yeah, he does the the, 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 the soda can thing where he like, but he, oh, he manages to hit the right. button and somehow yeah. the rat like gets dragged into the, the cotton picker. Dragged into the cotton picker? Yeah. Uh. 
Anyways, that puppet is very um, goopy. Yes. But very uh, well made. It's got a big movable head. They uh, think it's got a very large tail. They clean. They're, they're not cleaning out cleaning out that cotton for weeks. That is just, oh, no. That's just chunky. I think that batch <laughs> is ruined. What is your plan for city growth now that the cotton mill is full of dead bat rat again? I, man, love, I G- love that it ends with yep, yeah, put the help on its side. Yeah. Yeah. Like, who the fuck is gonna work in it? Like, Twelve people died. The entire crew died. The manager <laughs> died. I think it's a true and testament found- to the power of capitalism. You know, it's like <laughs> just, you know, the, the job the ol- never stops. The only person that survived is like the chubby lady who worked in the office. Listen, H&M isn't going to make that T-shirt just with wishes and dreams. Yeah. They need cotton. You want to look good at prom, don't you? So then <laughs> shut up and get to work. That's what they need is more high school level workers. That's what I'm saying, factory. man. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. My first job was at McDonald's. Uh, any- <laughs> the, this place cannot handle a McDonald's. A McDonald's is a little too clean for what, the, for the, what it's this like, town oh, is. We're, really. we're not eating fancy. Come on. Yeah, that's a fun <laughs> game. What fast food restaurant is in this town? It's gotta be like it's gotta be like a Blimpies or something like that. Like the <laughs> like the kind of kind of place you only find like attached to a gas station. Yeah. <laughs> I think a Panda Express could thrive real well there. <laughs> no, because I, I mean, I think that they would consider that like, you know, exotic. Yeah. Yeah, that's, you're right. You're absolutely bringing right. in an yeah. element into the town, Peacock. <laughs> yeah, a Culver's. Culver's butter burger. <laughs> oh, that's almost too white. And the food is too good. <laughs> I don't know. It's real tough. Uh, Roy Rogers? Roy Rogers feels maybe like. Maybe, maybe, how about, how about, how about Sparrow? Uh, you know what, Gina? That's exactly what it is. It's yeah. a Sbarro. Yep, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. Oh my god, Nailed that's it fucking perfect. In that's five. exactly what it is. It's a fucking Sbarro. <laughs> and it's the nicest looking building. In, yeah, totally like New York. It's the nicest building in town. Oh that's where you god. go on date night. Absolutely. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, it, it, yeah, you, you have to have something special. You have to have something to look forward to. You take you a, can't go to a movie a theater that's like twenty that? miles yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. you kid right before prom. What else are you gonna do? No, you're going, going to Sparrow. Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, prom is being held in the basement of the Cotton. Um, <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna say no, no, no. Come on, it, yeah. it's gotta be nice. They're gonna be doing it at the VFW Hall. Brad Dorf's there. <laughs> <laughs> Brad Dorf is there. He, he's so, he's somehow being hired the chaperone. <laughs> you wow. Because everybody, everybody, everybody else's dads have died at the mill at some point, just <laughs> eaten by rats. Separating people who are dancing too close by squirting them with melting <laughs> rat juice. <laughs> you know there's one house in this town where it's like six kids living in the house and no adults, but the house runs perfectly fine. <laughs> He's getting, he, you know, he's getting a little, he's getting a little teary eye when they play open arms. Sure. <laughs> Try not to sing. Yeah. This place ain't he so knows bad. all the words, the creeds, I'll take you higher. Oh, creed. Um, <laughs> Scott Stapp oh, was going to wow. kill the president. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> Scott Stapp was going to, Scott Stapp said the CIA told him to kill Obama. <laughs> oh. He's a very reliable witness, so I believe this entirely. Could you imagine though if that had happened? <laughs> what what FBI what section of the FBI is kind of like so nervous about Barack Hussein Obama? Oh. And like, you know what we need to do? We need we need a person who we can rely on to kill the president. Have you heard any Creed albums? <laughs> and then it just the plan unfurls from there. Ugh. I love it when you're on Peacock because there, there, it's all, it's oops, all tangents. I'm, <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so distracted. I, you don't I'm have so to. No, no, it's the great. movie we're covering is Graveyard. Shift. Graveyard. Like we could, we could have done 90 minutes on the accents, but that's what everyone else would do. This do is you, what we do. Do you guys have any experience with Graveyard Shifts? Either not yourselves directly, but anybody oh. in your family or anybody you knew. Oh no, I Gina. did. I did. Uh, yeah. I worked. I worked at a uh, at a hotel, and I had to answer the phones. Oh my <laughs> so god! So I uh, I ran into some interesting situations then. 
like, sure. did you have to answer the phones from inside the like guests from the hotel, or was it people Both, trying to like oh, wow. like get guests and and outside callers? Oh, oh my, my god! Yeah, that's dangerous. Yes, yeah, yeah. That was uh, that like. was an interesting experience. Um, my night shift was I worked overnight at Universal Studios Hollywood. Um, Wait, there I was an helped- overnight. It, there, well, there was for this. We I first helped the install of the horror nights, um, oh, all wow. the mazes and stuff. And then they're like, "Well, you're already used to this." And I said, "Used to?" And because the person had quit, like with three weeks left, so I got hired to do this in at a very last second. Uh-huh. And then they're like, "We're gonna put in Christmas lights." So then I was I was basically up all night from September until just before thanksgiving and i went crazy yeah it really it um, really fucks with you you, you never sure. you never get enough sleep you never get the, enough sleep if i told the psycho house story on here no no what's that okay. so i'm uh, i'm working overnights this is the christmas lights thing uh-huh. there's a giant container that's out um past uh where uh, basically where the psycho house is. Yeah, yeah. Um, when you turn left to go into the psycho house on the right is the psycho house and the Bates motel. And on the left, there was an empty space. that was like a staging area for when you do an outdoor shoot there. This is kind of very different now that there's the set from more of the worlds out there and everything. But I'm told to go out there and grab this one box. Cause it has all of these extension cords that are special outdoor extension cords. And they forgot this one box. Can you go out and grab it? So I go out in the golf cart, I grab it and I go out towards the Bates motel. And I'm about to turn right to go back onto the tram path. And I look up and I, I, I know the back lot. I've been there many times. I was a studio guide. I know exactly what's in the back line. I look up and as I'm continually driving, I see something pass in mother's window. And when I tell you my bones jumped out of my fucking mouth. (laughs) What was it? Did you find out what it was? It was the light. It was the fucking light pole that's out there. Oh my God. And because I was moving, nothing in the window moved. I was moving. But for that second, I fucking lost my goddamn mind. Sure. Do they leave a ghost light on for that place, isn't it? Well, there is one giant light pole that's out there. And then the actual, at at that point, there were two psycho houses. There was the original and then the the fucking remake uh, was built out there as well. Wow. And... um, so I just, oh my God, I scream so loud. I'm sure neighbors heard that. Yeah, probably, <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, nuts to that. Was it comically, so gir- that, was it comically girlish scream? I hope it was. Oh, I I don't know. I, it was, I did it with my full chest. I'll tell you that. Right <laughs> oh, so in your head, you sound like Howie Long. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 the yeah. manliest of screamers. <laughs> wow, he got scared. He screamed and then he threw a touchdown. He's a punk. Someone touched his fade and then he just erupted with a dinosaur roar. Oh my God. Is it did we we missed probably plenty, but that's not the point of talking about graveyard shift. Um let's play everyone's favorite game show. Choose your own death venture, and that's where we decide. Of the many deaths portrayed in this in this motion picture, believe it or not, which one would you choose and why? A lot of them involved getting eaten. So buckle up. You got you start with pushed into a cotton picker. Or the one rat death I'm going to include is melted with acid. Oh. Then you have devoured by a giant bat, devoured by a giant bat, falls downstairs, multiple broken bones, chewed on by rats, and then something? Uh, head squashed by a coffin. We kind of missed that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. They do Dorif dirty. He he dies. Rats aren't even involved. He just gets squashed in the head by a coffin. Devoured by a giant bat. Arm ripped off first, then devoured by a giant bat. Devoured by a giant bat. Stabbed with a sharp bone by your boss after you helped him up. Mm. Yeah. These are tough. Devoured by a giant bat. Uh, torn apart by a cotton picker. It's it's like a circle. Uh, 
Peacock, you're our guest. You get to go first. I think Please I got to go head smash first because it's the fastest. All of these are so sure. brutal. I, I'm going to mm-hmm. go head smash. Okay. Uh, it, it would be over very quickly. Yeah. But of course, your 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 body will be devoured by rats. I don't need it anymore. I'll be dead. Like my head <laughs> will be smashed. It's not that great, anyways. You're care. out of that town. What yeah. do you need it for? I'm moving to Castle uh, Rock. <laughs> moving, yeah, they, yeah, upward mobility, baby. Yeah. <laughs> To the high life. Gina, what say you? Yeah, I'm going to take Head Smash, too, for pretty much the same reason. Uh, you know, I figure the rats will eat me, less to worry about with burying me. You know, save my family yeah. on expenses. Yeah. Are you prepared to constantly have a tear welling up in at least one eye? I uh, practically do anyway. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, that's no different than any other day. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it's only... There are no good options here. This is the only good option. There's no fucking way I'm dying in a cotton picker. That sounds terrible. And I don't want to be devoured by a giant bat. Like, yeah. like the good thing is to get stabbed in the heart by a sharp bone by a guy you just helped up. Ugh. I don't know. Do we ever find out who's buying this cotton and what the cotton's being used for? No. Something terrible. And, and if they notice it, if their cotton comes with you know, chunks of flesh in yeah. it, and, 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 and like you know, you know, clumps of hair might be human, you know, might be rodent. We don't know. We didn't. That's order our this. sequel. The the the, the bat buyer rat. from the Gap is like, you know, I got a shipment of your cotton recently, and it's very bloody. Yeah, from when I ordered. Let's idle hands that shit. Make a bunch of Gap T-shirts. Kill a bunch of people. <laughs> there you go. Now we're back to slacks. Yeah. Uh, that just about does it. You know, Josh Hollis does our artwork and uh, Revenge Body does all of our music. Go to Bandcamp and, and type in uh, Revenge Body and you can get all of our remixes and so much more. Uh, he, he, listen, Peacock, you got a show. Tell tell people where it's at and oh, how they can listen to you it. Can What's going on? Get my the show My Neighbors Are Dead wherever you get your podcast. We do a uh, we're once a week meeting tertiary characters from all your favorite horror films and we're talking to them. So you can get it wherever you get your podcasts. Uh My Dead Neighbors on Twitter, My Neighbors Are Dead on Instagram. The other one was taken and that's where we are. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to wonder about that guy. <laughs> yeah. For sure, because yeah. I thought, like, there's no way no one's... And when we came up with this, I, I came up with the title, I was like, no one's going to have this. And then somebody did. <laughs> so weird. So genuinely weird. Gina, kind of, where can people find you on these here internets? I write about movies and television at thespool.net, and I am on Twitter and Instagram under Gina Does Things. Do it today, people. Check it out. Uh, you can find us on the Twitter and the Facebook group where you can de- discuss things in detail. We've got an Instagram. We've got a Patreon where people can uh, listen to us talk about Mosquito uh, last month. And this month, I'm not sure what we're doing, but it's going to be cool. Uh, and, of course, just dropping a few days ago uh, is our Halloween 6 episode where we talk over nice. Halloween 6. You asked for it and we're doing it. God help us. <laughs> it's actually turning out to be a lot more fun than we than than, than we anticipated. Even you know, we're yeah. we're already at the point where they're not they're not very good. Uh but but <laughs> they're it's turning out it's turning out to to be a lot of fun to talk about them. Yes. Yeah, we enjoy discussing them but while it's happening. We don't have to prepare ahead of time. We're not doing that. Let's break this down into six episodes. I was just thinking about Jason X the other day and like how, how that drove us insane, Gina. Just lost us. Just, 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 you know, we just, it was like, it was like event horizon by the time we got to the end of that day. <laughs> In more ways than one. Uh, so that just about does it. Uh, don't worry, folks. Animal Attacks April will continue uh, for myself, for Gina, and for Adam. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I can keep up with you, damn it. Uh-huh. Yeah, you, you can. <laughs> yeah, don't act don't let anybody ever tell you you can. <laughs>
<laughs> we could do all rat movies. <laughs> we could do we well, do that. We could do the one with Peter Weller. We could do Food oh, of the Gods. Oh, Come on, man. Food of the Gods definitely has to happen at some point. I watched that so many times on TV. So many times. We could do we could do Willard. Right. Either either yeah. either the original or or, or Crispin Glover and his cheekbones. And then there's Ben, but that's also kind of Willard. Yes. That's just Willard too. All right. So if we if we found an April that had just four Fridays, we could probably go <laughs> Rat Fest. Oops all rats. Yes, oops all rats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I heard all that. That's very funny. <laughs> well, that's what we're calling it then. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, that's great. Oh, my God. <clears throat> I'm so, so sorry. 